Hello, this is Davey Mooney, coming to you from the University of North Texas, where I run the jazz guitar program. I'm a Benedetto artist, got a new CD from Sunnyside Records, live at National Sawdust, and uh, it's my jazz improv book, Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary. And I wanted to talk today about the Wayne Shorter tune, uh, Yes or No. Sometimes, at least on certain records, it's Yes and No. Uh, on Branford Marsalis' record, Random Abstract, which is one of my favorite versions. So, but it seems like most of the time it's yes or no. Um, Wayne Shorter recorded it on Juju from, I guess, 65, 64, 65, with uh, McCoy Tyner, Elvin Jones, and Reggie Workman. And uh, that version and the version on Random Abstract are the ones that I know the best. And it's a really fun tune. We've been doing it in my uh, improv class here. Uh, I always like to do some, some Wayne Shorter music and I'll just uh, go through the harmony of this tune a little bit. It's really nice. It's a combination of uh, kind of modal, modality, modal progressions, and very functional harmony progressions. So it starts out, you have four bars, like a D7 sus, and then four bars of a D major 7. And that's followed by a quick, like, 2-5 to G, and then F7 flat major and that goes by real quick like two beats on each chord like one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then you have two bars on B flat major and then like an E minor seven or an E minor nine which I really like because I like doing this chord and uh, that repeats for the uh, second A section and then the bridge you have a very long uh, series of two fives it's actually kind of similar to uh, the bridge of speak no evil but A minor 7 flat 5 for 2 bars, D7 for 2 bars, G minor 7 for 2 bars, C7 for 2 bars, F minor 7 for 2 bars, B flat 7 for 2 bars, E flat major 7 for 2 bars, and then A minor 7 or A minor 11 for 2 bars. And then the, uh, the last A section is the same as the first. And yeah, like I said, it's a really, uh, really fun progression. I guess harmonically what I'll often do is on that D7 sus, I'm treating it kind of just like a like a D7 or a A minor seven, playing you know my uh, the kind of things that I play with that type of progression, like you know my uh, I guess it's sort of Pat Martino by way of Steve Mazikowski kind of language. You know, occasionally I might make it Lydian dominant. I don't know. I might put a uh, sort of like an A melodic minor sound in there. There's a lot of different things you can do. Triad pairs, you know, C and D triad would work nice. Then, you know, D major seven. Uh, play just D major scale. Uh, I don't know, various pentatonics, F sharp minor pentatonic would be nice. You could make it more of a Lydian sound, D Lydian, and play C sharp minor pentatonic, or just D Lydian. Sometimes, too, if I want to take it a next level, I, I tell my students if I got the major seven chord, uh, next level of dissonance maybe, or just kind of uh, upper playing around with the upper extensions, I might make it Lydian. And then if I want to go beyond that, sometimes I'll, I'll do this sound. Like a major seven sharp nine chord. And I think of that in this key, D major seven sharp nine is kind of like F sharp uh, harmonic minor. play multiple choruses on this tune, maybe, you know, D7 sus, D major 7, D Lydian, um, and then maybe that major 7 sharp 9, if you want, or not. And then, you know, this progression, I guess the trickiest part for me is navigating that, you know, A2-5 to G is all fine and good, and then F7 to B flat, and in that progression, I just look at certain uh, parts of the neck, and, uh, you know, just try to find a chord voicing, uh, Find the guide tones, you know, the notes that change, and also be aware of the notes that stay the same going from a G major to an F7. So if I'm going up. That's the progression, right? I guess in that case, I'm kind of looking at uh, A minor 7 here, D7 or D7 flat 9 here, G major, and I'm kind of thinking like 
or the F7, like a C minor. That takes me right into B flat major scale. If I were down here, I might think A minor, D7, G major, and then maybe this little F, F uh, triad. part of the neck I have some uh, grips and, and fingering things that help me get from uh, playing a 2-5 in G and then a 5-1 in B flat so I'll be here like oops <laughs> of the song like I said uh, I guess the challenge it's the progression isn't isn't strange but you just you're out there a long time on the two five one you know normally we get a two five where you have one measure of the two chord one measure of the five and then one or even shorter like two beats on each one but this one you're out there for so for me if I'm gonna decide to alter the dominance like D7 go to G minor, uh, C7 go into F, I have to make sure I don't start the alter alterations too early. Or if I do, make sure I don't, I don't run out of gas. So often what I'll do... I'll wait, I'll really wait for the last kind of two beats of the dominant seven measure. Uh, before I put any real dissonant alterations on the dominant resolving 5-1 you know, on each of those chords. And that gets back to something I talk about in the book, uh, neg uh, not negative guide tones, um, the five uh, and nine eighth note resolution cells, you know, the idea that you're, if you're on uh, you know, G minor, C7 to F minor. And in this case, you got two whole measures on G minor. wait for those last two beats to do something, you know, um, like a, I could do a tritone sub, I could go, I could go, an augmented sound, there's a lot of different things, but I very much think about it as, uh, you know, three and four and one, where the three and four and have some kind of dissonance or alterations, you know, and then sometimes I have nine eighth note ones, I might have, in that case, you know, this is C7 going to F minor. I guess that's more of a, a melodic minor scale, like a melodic minor up a half step. That's one. You know, I have a lot of them. That's another one that's uh, kind of melodic minor based. But, uh, yeah, so that's, that's the challenge of that part to me. Uh, and it's nice. I really love listening to uh, Wayne Shorter on this uh, recording. You get to hear him really sort of bop out <laughs> during, the, during the bridge. And there's one interesting thing in the recording that I like to point out to students, and it's right around minute two, I remember that, and I think it's the second A of one of his choruses going into the bridge. But he's on that, that D7 sus, and I don't know if this was a, a mistake or his finger slipped or if he was just trying to experiment with some different sounds over that pedal, D pedal. But the, what he does, he starts off, uh, this is the second A, he goes... He plays like starting on the note B, he descends a D major scale against that D7 sus. But when he gets down to the third down here, he plays, plays an F natural. So it's this interesting. <laughs> but then right after that, he's it's you know another two bars of the D7 sus. He just plays a straight up D mixolydian scale. So I don't know if he was meant to do both things or he realized, oops, <laughs> I better play. Uh, D uh, mixolydian after that interesting combination of major seven with a, with a minor third. I mean, it's kind of a, uh, you know, plays the major third in that octave. And then when the major seven chord comes, he just goes, starting on C, sh on C sharp, he just goes right down the D major scale. So that's, that's kind of an interesting spot. Like I said, I'm not sure if he's working on like a modal mixture and thinking it's a D pedal, I'll just experiment with different modes of D. But I remember on uh, transcribing ESP when I was in uh, 
in college here at UNT as an undergrad, and I, I don't have the, I can't call to mind the exact line, but I remember on that first chord, you know, that E major seven, E E seven sharp nine, I think it plays like an E Lydian scale. There's some different sounds that he, uh, you know, different than what we would would be taught in jazz education, you know, are the correct scales for those chords that sometimes he'll do uh, with the same root. So I'm not sure if that was just a kind of just going for it or uh, a, a premeditated thing. So anyway, I'll play a few choruses on this tune um, at a hopefully respectable tempo. You know, I don't quite play it as quick as uh, on Random Abstract, such a great record, Lewis Nash and everybody, Kenny Kirkland. It's so edgy. It's got that burnout thing, that uh, late 80s, you know, <laughs> burnout vibe. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy it. It's uh, yes or no. Thank mm -hmm. you. 